Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by. My name is Daphne Worrell, Marketing Manager for ODG by MCG, and I'm excited to welcome you to today's webinar, Introducing the New ODG by MCG. During this webinar, all participants will be in a listen-only mode. If you'd like to ask a question, please use the chat feature located in the lower corner of your screen, and if we don't get to all the questions, we will answer you through email following the webinar. The webinar is being recorded, and the recording will be sent to you within one week. Our presenter today is Tom Farrell, Senior Account Executive for ODG by MCG. Tom trains providers, case managers, and claims adjusters in the use of ODG within the work comp, short-term disability, and auto insurance markets. Tom has 12 years' experience in the delivery of evidence-based guidelines and claims analytics. Tom, you can take it from here. Thank you, Daphne. Hi, everyone. This is Tom Farrell. Uh, Jeff, can you hear me okay? Yep, loud and clear. Okay, great. Just wanted to get that out of the way, make sure before I talk too, too long. Hi, everyone. I'm Tom Farrell, the Senior Account Executive with ODG. I've uh, been with ODG since 2007, so I've definitely uh, been around here and, and seen lots of, lots of great things from the start and lots of improvements as well. And what we'll be going over today is our new our new platform. It's not as new anymore, but, um, but we still like to consider it new because we're still running our legacy website, which is still um, available for people who are already on it before, but most people are upgrading to the new site, and eventually they all will. The legacy website, I don't know <clears throat> if it's going to be around forever, but it certainly will always be updated. So both websites, ODG by MCG and the uh, legacy ODG website are both uh, valid, updated, evidence-based medicine websites. So we'll get started on this new platform, ODG by MCG. It's a, it's a tab-based website, which is new to us, but it's, uh, you know, compared to the legacy website, but it helps that you can go through a whole claim while remaining on one page and not having to navigate through uh, so many Tom, sorry to interrupt, but maybe uh, I think you want to share your screen. We're still seeing the slide. Oh, boy. That's okay. Thank you, Daph. I appreciate that. Okay, what about now? All right, there we go. Looks good. Okay, great. Thank you for uh, for mentioning that. So sorry about that, guys. So this is the, the, the new platform, ODG by MCG. You can see here it's tab-based. But those of you who are familiar with our legacy ODG website, you can see it's very different. Uh, however, the, the benefit of being tab-based, you can remain on the same page. Now, with so much information uh, in, in evidence-based medicine, really you could be uh, searching through a maze of things uh, when you're having to jump to different web pages, uh, which can be confusing if you haven't done it before. But here on the ODG by MCG page of being tab-based, you don't have to leave the page. You just jump on different tabs, and it, it saves or pins all the information you've done before. Uh, and as we give, get into an example, I'll show you how these things will be pinned and saved and will also affect the results of, you know, disability duration, things like that. So, and also an important thing to know is how to clear that. You would click on this ODG by MCG icon, and it would clear the pins or clear the saved uh, items that you were searching for because they will not always be necessary uh, there and could affect, as I said, it could affect the duration, so you want to clear those sometimes. But because uh, this, see this big search bar at the top of the screen, the ODG by MCG website is search-based, and we're going to get into more details on that in a minute. I just want to show you what else is on this Home tab page. There's ways to uh, quickly search of disability duration, treatment, and cost. You can browse by type beneath that, return to work diagnoses, and medical treatments. These are, you know, the most common why they're listed here. I also should mention that these web, this website can also be customized if, if your uh, company would like to do that to see, like, let's say, for a certain job description, that uh, is most prevalent in your company, you see a certain injury the, mo the most often. You can change what is showing as uh, in the return to work diagnoses or the medical treatment, whatever just makes for 
a faster way to find what you're looking for. Uh, you would have to, you couldn't necessarily do that yourself. You'd have to speak to, to uh, an account, your account executive to have that done for you, but that can be done. Uh, also, you could click on this body uh, and you just click on the little dots here. This will click fun new ways of jumping around of what you're looking for. I'll click back on the web page before we get into that. The home page. And then here at the bottom of the screen, guidelines by state. So if states and provinces in North America, what, what guidelines they are using. If you want to see what all the states are using, you can click on this icon. Uh, you'll see the vast majority of them are following ODG, but some states have run their own guidelines. And then a quick start guide here, uh, which will give you a, instructions and a video. And besides that, for the instructions and video, if you go up here to help and training, there are a lot of tools uh, to learn how to do things as well. Links to videos and uh, ODG certifications, how to contact the ODG help desk, information and guides, uh, and telephone numbers up here. And then just my account and log out up here. Now, so what I was saying before, everything's search-based, an important thing to know, if you go up to here, codes, maybe I'll zoom in my screen a little bit, it is pretty tiny. Um, and I hope I hope you guys can see it or viewing. So automatically or by default, it's going to be ODG medical topics, which is just saying, you know, words, you could start typing, like here it says carpal tunnel or lumbar strains, or you could type words like that. But if you want to search, if you have an ICD code or a CPT code or an NDT code, you would go ahead and check that because if you do not check that box, it will not be searching based on that. These last three, AMA, SIRA, and CBS, these are Australian codes. So it's um, unless you are going to be doing work in Australia, you're, you probably will not have those listed here. So I will start typing. Let's do the example, carpal tunnel. And you can see all these check, bar, check marks appear in these tabs. So it's saying if there's information regarding this, regarding my search already. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see it has the same information listed here or hyperlinks for all this information of disability duration, carpal tunnel syndrome, carpal tunnel release surgery, and treatment guidelines. 131 listed here of different ones, recommended, not recommended, conditionally recommended, um, or references to other material. We'll get into that when we get into the treatment tab. I'll click on the disability duration tab right now. <clears throat> and for all these tabs, there are individual videos. You can watch instructions on, how to, on what these are for and how to use them best. And of course, you could make the screen bigger, but we're not going to watch the video now. I just wanted to show you that. So for duration, uh, you can say, well, is it carpal tunnel release surgery or for carpal tunnel, carpal tunnel syndrome? We'll just click on carpal tunnel syndrome. And then it says average 54 days, best practice 24 days. Well, that's helpful, but can we do a little better than that? Can we get more specific? Go back up to the search bar up here and click in it. And then you can refine in your search, and you can start saying, well, the Department of Labor, uh, Department of Labor, Labor job class, or you could put in an actual job title, let's say uh, welder. And as I type welder, whoa, a bunch of options pop up. You can get very specific. We'll say that uh, arc welding, and then. You can say the person is located in Delaware. You could say their age, state of the injury. And as I'm doing all this, the average amount of duration days and best practice duration days are changing. If it's workers' comp or non-workers' comp, that has an effect as well. Boy, quite a bit. So in this case, 44-year-old arc welder from Delaware injured with 
carpal tunnel syndrome, well, carpal tunnel, boy, that'd be important for welding, using your hands so much, uh, 217 days in workers' comp. Best practice, 71 days. So the average average is not necessarily something you want to uh, aim for. You want to you want to aim for best practice. Best practice is under the best case scenario without any other complications. This can be achieved, or uh, it's definitely possible to be achieved in, in a lot of cases. Average is going to be high. That includes if it's uh, you know confounding factors put into that equation. Uh, and actually, we didn't even check any confounding factors here, but for those, it'll include the extremes in the equation, which will drive the days up so much. That's why it's 217 days. Uh, under this, more uh, details on if you're having conservative treatment or if you're having surgery, if it's uh, your, your modified duty, if it's a non-dominant arm, and so forth, all the different scenarios. Then codes related to this topic, ICD-9 codes and ICD-10 codes. So we're on ICD-10, of course, but if you, if you need the references to an ICD-9 code, you can do that here, or see other ICD-10 codes here, you can do that as well. Then capabilities and activity modifications for restricted work tells you with modified duty or regular duty, how many, you know, what can be done per day? How many pounds, how many can you lift? How many times per hour can you do, it, do that? So for all, every ICD code will tell you capabilities and activity modifications for restricted work. Uh, because the evidence shows if you can get someone back to work without risking re-injury, they're probably going to heal faster. As long as you don't, you know, risk, as I said, re-injury or hurting something else. Uh, physical therapy guidelines are listed down here, as well as chiropractic guidelines. Up here towards the top of this disability duration tab, uh, listed here, uh, today's date, return to work prescription recommendation, best practice, and average amount. So that's, let's see, let's go back up here. Right here, this risk assessment score, it's kind of a, like this whole picture we have is a thermometer of low, moderate, cautionary, high, and extreme. You definitely want to keep a patient out of the extreme, especially the top 5%, which is where, you know, a, a claim might turn from weeks and months, it might turn into years. If somebody's in that high-risk category, you want to do your best to keep somebody out of that high-risk area. That's the majority of, of cost and duration days of all of these injuries are the people that are in that extreme risk. So this one's pretty high, though. This is 78.24. Uh, as I said, lots of videos on the Fed, on, um, on every section. So if you want to watch a video on carpal tunnel, we provide one here. We don't watch the whole thing. Let's see. Okay. For a common cause of the condition known as carpal tunnel syndrome. I put this back on mute. Um, just in case it would it would complicate things with any feedback. We're not going to watch the whole video anyway. Okay. So here is also a return to health. A link for that. You can open the return to health or share the link in the patient portal or return to return to health instructional. Uh, you can print this or save as Adobe PDF. Print the page or go to the return to work prescription. And there's also a functional ability form here. I'll click on, I'll click on return to work prescription, and this can be filled out by a treatment provider or a case manager um, from the desk of employer name, email, you know, contact information, all that sort of thing. Date of injury, then it's of the surgery, the date of the surgery, then comment, comments here. You can say insert recommended text. <coughs> Excuse me or modify that to how you'd like. Uh, for disability duration, you would check whatever you think is uh, appropriate here. The target return to work date or the average, different scenarios. You can adjust those scenarios, however, and then capabilities and activity modifications for restricted work. You could say, well, we'll do the modified duty, and then you could adjust the modifications if you'd like and insert a job description. I clicked on the home page, which also clears this out. If I had I clicked on the back arrow, it would have gotten us to where we were. 
that was carpal tunnel. So just since it's cleared out, we'll try something else. Um, that's 33.5. Oh, you know what? We got a check ICD-10, although it showed up anyway. So we'll click on back strain. That takes us to the disability duration page again. Uh, and as I said, you click on search again, then you can enter in more specific details. Let's click on the treatment tab since we just went over uh, disability duration. So on the treatment tab, there's 1,019 results of treatment for S33.5 or back strain. So that's definitely a lot, and you wouldn't want to have to sit through all those. So you could say, well, I only want to see ones that are recommended. And just know that recommended will also include uh, conditionally recommended. So R for recommended, CR for conditionally recommended. And also, what's showing now, if you hover your mouse over any of these, it gives you a little summary over of what it says by just hovering the mouse over aerobic exercise. And it tells you a little summary of what it says, first of all, if it's recommended or not, and then why. So that's handy. You don't have to click on every single link you see to, to find out in summary what does it say. So then we can say, well, okay, so that brought us down to 91 results for treatment, down from, I think it was 2019. Then we Break it down by category, say, well, I only, only want to see recommended surgery for uh, low back. And that brings us down to we're at 19. And then body systems, so of course, low back. And so, of course, I didn't change anything there. Um, and then we'll click on one of these as an exa example. Let's Click on uh, Final Fusion, Conditionally Recommended. <clears throat> so Final Fusion for the low back, Conditionally Recommended, and here the criteria in blue will be explaining what, when would this be recommended, when would this be appropriate to do, because obviously it's not always recommended to do spinal fusion, of course, but sometimes it is necessary. And it explains here in the flu criteria uh, when when it is appropriate. And beneath that's risk versus benefit. And you see all these hyperlinks, hospital length of stay, physical therapy, all over the page. You can click on any of those to uh, read more greater detail on physical therapy or length of stay or, or any of these things here. Also, all these little citations with the author and the year, you can click on these to bring you to the bibliography of that evidence itself, sometimes even bring you to that piece of evidence uh, where it came well, always where it came from, but sometimes the actual uh, listing of evidence. Anyway, that shows the transparency of ODG and how if you're following ODG, you have backup. You don't just say, well, I'm following these guidelines and people who don't know ODG might think, well, what does this mean to me? It doesn't mean anything. Um, but you can say, well, look at where these guidelines are based. And you can say, you don't even have to cite the guidelines. You can just cite where the evidence came from, because ODG will take you directly to the evidence and where, the, where these statements came from and these recommendations. So you're backed up many times over if anybody ever uh, – if you're, if you're following ODG, you don't have to worry about any uh, – being sued, or at least you won't have to worry about someone suing you winning as long as you're following the ODG. Then on this page also is the treatment info PDF, methodology, physical therapy, and chiropractic guideline insert here, documenting, documenting exceptions to the guidelines. So you do this, if let's say your treatment provider wants to do something, or, or if you happen to be a treatment provider, you strongly feel in, in this case for this patient, you, you want to uh, provide some treatment that ODG generally does not recommend. Well, there are, there are a way to follow, there are guidelines of how to get exceptions to that. Uh, so if, it, if it, you're following the right reasoning be, behind it, uh, it's just ways, this is just instructions on how to document those exceptions. This is why I'm doing something that ODG generally does not recommend. In this case, uh, it's, it's backed up by the evidence. It would be the better thing to do. If you want to suggest changes to ODG or if you're seeing something medically uh, that 
Well, or, you know, for whatever the case may be, formatting, management, whatever it is, if you want to make a suggestion how to change your DG, definitely click on here uh, and contact us, you know, by email or phone. If you want to see who's on our editorial advisory board, the uh, over 100 positions analyzing all this evidence and making recommendations based on the evidence, uh, we have them listed here. Then you can print or save as PDF if you click on this print icon. You go to print page. Generally speaking, uh, when you go to print, there will be, okay, it's loading right now. Anyway, I, don't, I didn't mean to spend too much time on this print thing. So, but when it opens up and you go to print and it's asking you what printer do you want to go to, just go to the scroll menu and you can change that to um, say this PDF. That's really all you're trying to do is say this PDF and not print. Then copy URL, just link up here. I'm clicking on this right now. Because otherwise, if you don't use, use this exact URL, which from the last thing you were searching on, if you look up here on the web browser bar, it just says ODG by MCG.com slash treatment. So no matter what we're searching in ODG and we're on the treatment tab, it's going to say that. So you wouldn't want to copy this and save it because it's just going to take you to the general unsearched treatment page. So you'd want to click on copy URL to go to this exact page from where you were if you were, if you were looking at spinal fusion for a back strain. And you see over here, these were pinned. These are saving. So these are all going to be a factor in what we're searching. So if I'm searching about a different patient now, I'd want to click on ODG by MCG to clear that. Or you can click on drug formulary and it would clear that. The reason the drug formulary tab clears uh, what we previously, ser previously searched on is because our drug formulary is not condition-based. It's not based on what type of disease or injury somebody has. It's based on are these drugs safe to be using regardless. We'll get into drug formulary in, in a minute. I'll click on this next tab, Tau Index. So as I said, those things are still pinned for back strain and, and uh, low back fusion. Okay, so there's 1,935 entries here, but you can say, well, I, I know exactly what I want to search for, 97110. I don't want to look through everything. Okay, so I just type it in search. Hope you can see it just seems so small, the font. Uh, so I put in the exact CPT code. So then it takes me to the exact CPT that I wanted to look up. Tells me the CPT code, pro the procedure name, the CPT group that falls in, the frequency this is done uh, very often, you know, almost 40%. Uh, median number of visits, average number of visits, cost average, the authorized number of visits. So this could be get, you know, done six times without having the pre-authorization. Payment flag is green. Green means it's evidence-based. So it thumbs up, but green is evidence-based. Tau index, if I click on tau, or I click on this, and it gets into greater detail. If I hover over tau, it'll tell me what exactly this means, the 30.85. You're saying 30.85 is, is a positive number. You can tell measures correlation with timely return to work, ranging from negative 100 to, to positive 100. Positive tau is correlated with better than average return to work, while negative tau is worse than average. So generally speaking, something that's in a positive number is going to be recommended, but that's not always the case. Um, and sometimes something that actually slows down recovery is recommended. Uh, but normally, if it slows you down, it's not going to be recommended. So you see there is a green thumbs up and a yellow thumbs up. Yellow is data-driven. It's not evidence-based, but it's data-driven. And it just shows that from the data of this procedure being done, this is going to improve someone's return to work rate. Um, and green, as I said, is evidence-based. You see lots of greens and yellows. You think, so is everything in ODG approved? Well, of course not. This is just what's... Um, listed on the page right now. As I said, there's almost 2,000 listings here. Red is a route for review. Um, and, and just because it's a route for review doesn't mean it's always denied. It just means this needs to be reviewed because it could be a problem. But then we'll click on painted flag and I think it'll show, it will have another option. This is just like on the legacy website, there's green, yellow, red, and black. 
Black is about for review with extreme caution. The Black is kind of saying, are you sure you're good, are you sure you want to do this procedure for this injury? You might be making a mistake here. This, this might not match up. Uh, the red is saying, well, review this because, yes, this may be appropriate, but it also could be dangerous. Make sure this is qualified. So from here, let's see, I'll click on drug form. Well, I'll click on cost really quick, and then we can hop in the drug formulary, and then I want to show you the uh, job profile tool. So on the cost tab, it gives you total cost, indemnity cost, medical cost, expense administrative, and that's what the total cost is made up of. So you can see how how a different case falls into this. If one fell in with a $4,400, that's pretty good. That's um, it's a little. It's less than typical. Uh, and then if it falls, you know, thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred, that's that's just excellent. You can see how these things compare. And if, as I said, breaks it down indemnity, medical, expense, administrative. So you, you can compare not just the total cost. You can compare all these other ones as well. Average weekly wage is of course an influence on cost. Then you can say, well, I want to see medical only. You can print or save as a WPDF. You can copy the URL. And then let's jump into drug formulary. On the formulary tab. There's definitely a lot of drugs listed here. You can sort by class or you can actually filter by saying, well, I'm only looking for anti-epilepsy drugs or AEDs uh, because there are so many here. It's good to have this filter up here to search. Or you can say, well, I just want to see all the drugs that are not recommended, all the ones that are recommended, or I want to see them based by cost by brand, by generic name, by drug class. Uh, so these can all be organized in different ways. Here, antidepressants, for example, it says for mental disorders. Um, and there'll be some drugs listed a couple times, but for different reasons. So there might be a, a Y for certain uh, causes, might be an N for other causes. and and so that's the purpose of why it explains what it's for. And why means, you know, you can, it's kind of pre-authorized, described, and does not mean it's always a no, it just means that there's, it needs pre-authorization. Um, and, and it's good it has that because sometimes it is too dangerous, a lot of the times it's too dangerous to be prescribed a certain drug, uh, and sometimes it's a potentially dangerous drug, however, in a certain case, if prescribed at a, you know, a low amount, it's, it's necessary. Even though it's uh, potentially dangerous, it's necessary in this case and prescribes a low amount so that the risk is very low for any problems. You can sort drugs by class, um, NSAIDs, opioids, you see as the years go on, you know, now we have can cannabinoids, topical energy six, and then on this formulary page, you can look at the opioid MED calculator, and there's a video for that as well. So, codeine, fentanyl, hydrocodone, I'm just going to start putting in, and I'm not recommending prescribing this for sure, but let's say we just put in a bunch of these 10 milligrams of, of the first six, and it tells you the morphine equivalent dose per day of each one of those. So, codeine is 1.5 MEDs per day, uh, fentanyl oral is 1,000. So the same amount of milligrams, uh, codeine and me uh, fentanyl oral are definitely, well, fentanyl oral, I should say, because um, it's a different amount of MED per day than the next one. But anyway, so together those have put 60 milligrams, just 60 milligrams of these drugs. It's 1,115 and a half MED per day. So this is a handy tool to find out what the MED per day is. Opioid dosing, you want to keep it under 50 MED per day just, just to be safe. However, um, you know, you can prescribe more, but know that it gets to high risk, 50 to 75. 75 to 100 is extreme risk. And the general consensus is over 100, the limit has been exceeded. Uh, for more information on this, 
you can click on ODG opioid dosing guidelines. This is in the chronic pain chapter of ODG, ODG by MCG. And so opioids are, of course, conditionally recommended, and then there's a criteria of when and how to prescribe opioids. What the overall recommendations are, their upper limit range of dose, different comparisons, also different citations, not only from different authors, but also different guidelines, CDC guidelines, ACOM, M2s, Washington State. Opioids, as you would imagine, is a, a very huge topic. So lots of lots of evidence on that, as there should be. From here, let's see, let's go back to the formula just to make sure I didn't leave anything out. Okay, so we went over the formulary, the OD, uh, opioid MED calculator, calculator, formulary info. Takes you to the PDF about the drug formulary. Definitions of every one of these columns. And then the cost of therapy calculations are found here in this PDF. So it's not necessarily, a cost is not necessarily based on one pill or one injection or whatever the case may be. It's, it's cost of therapy or what is to be expected. So for this one, you know, 30 day supply, two tablets per day, that sort of thing. It's open in a new tab, so I'll close it. And then you can print or save as Adobe PDF here as well. And then again, copy the URL to get to the exact place where you're looking. And then I'm going to clear out all these pin saved items. And I want to click on, to show you this job profile uh, tab at the end here. But we can also go to you know, move by clicking here and watching a video on it and just getting started from the job profile tab. Or honestly, you can do it from the home page as well if you go to search. And it'll, so all of these tabs, as you saw before, will uh, be factored into this search. Whether or not you're on the tab, they will all uh, be affected by your search. So we can say, We'll go, we'll, you know, I was going to say, uh, we'll go to the job profile again. We'll say firefighter. And of course, that's a giant subject, lots of different occupations with fighting fires. So we'll just say regular firefighter, which is a very heavy Department of Labor job class. And we'll say, And I'll click on Job Profile tab. So the ODG job profiler is based on uh, 32,000 different jobs. So our database is 32,000 jobs that you can search based on this or using this tool. So we'll stick with firefighter. Say California, there are definitely a lot of fires out there. Um, wherever the age may be, date of injury, target return to work date. We'll leave that blank right now. You know, uh, once we put in some more information, it'll usually automatically fill in the target return to work date. However, that can be adjusted even after it's filled in. Confounding factors, 
if the person's depressed, if diabetes, if they're obese, probably not obese, but being a firefighter, hypertension, smoker, surgery, substance abuse, opioids, they have legal representation. Of course, that affects the uh, cost and disability duration days, just as the data shows. Um, the job profile, it says demand score of a firefighter, 99. That means that being a firefighter is 99% it's, it's, it's more demanding than 99% of all other jobs. And if you come down here with physical demands, so carrying, pulling, pushing, lifting, standing, climbing, balancing, kneeling, and it continues on from there. But this is all based on uh, an eight-hour day. So it tells you here how many hours per day of, of an eight-hour day they would need to be doing this. So you see the first, the first four, I guess it was, and those other ones over there, carrying, pulling, pushing, lifting, all day, constant, eight hours per day, they'll be having to do these things. Uh, and that's, this is the example of a firefighter. Of course, you could put in a different uh, job description, too. It, as I said, 32,000 to choose from. Description here, you can see a full description of what, uh, of what being a firefighter is and what it requires and what, the, uh, what goes, what you're doing in a day as a firefighter. And then this could also be customized, which is available. However, being on the website offers so much, but you can also customize it um, using Job X. But so much is available on the website, you could, like this, share the job profile now. You can put in the company name, email address. And then reference claim number, and you can share this. And let's see, I just wanted to do one thing. Okay, so I was just checking in my notes. I something else I wanted to mention, but I think we pretty much covered it. Um, so I'll click on this customized part. So, yeah, you can assign this. So, I'm happy to cover any more of this website as well as if you're already speaking with an account executive or an account manager, they're happy to uh, do more demos and training as well. But so, as am I, I think from the from that screen, had my email and phone number, but I'm always, uh, feel free to contact me or the help desk. Our help desk is actually ODG help at mcg.com. And Tom, if you want to, if you want to kick it back to my screen, I can put the slide up with that information too. Oh, you've already got all that stuff? Sure. Okay. There we go. So <clears throat> all that contact is information any, is up there. Um, I'm sorry, Tom, I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, you know, after, after you say whatever you wanted to say, Doc, any questions uh, there are, we'd be happy to start those. Okay, well, yeah, no, thanks, Tom. That was a great presentation. Um, just a few questions here. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> you kind of touched on this in the beginning, and I know there's not really a definite answer, but how long will the legacy website be available? Well, yeah, again, I, I, I don't have a date, or we do not have a date that it will be phased out. It's just it will naturally probably will because uh, people who try out the, the new upgrade, ODG by Entity, the new platform, I uh, love it. And eventually, you know, most, most people will be moving to that because all new subscribers will be on 
this new platform. Uh, so let the just the legacy ODG. It's just as it's described. You know, people who are already using it, they're already used to it. Um, but as I said, the vast majority of, of legacy users who've tried the new platform end up wanting to switch to it anyway. So it's all all you need to know is that it's not going to be there forever. As far as the date, though, I do not have a date of when it will be phased out. But as long as it is up there on as a, as a website, it will always be valid and up-to-date and, and a good site to use with evidence-based medicine. All right, great. Thanks, Tom. Um, so how much does this site cost um, to gain access to this ODG by MCG? Well, there are um, a number of options uh, based on, on what you need it for, whether you're wanting to use it for uh, just web access or through data integration or application program interface or, you know, for what company and, and organization size and all that. So the best thing to do is get in contact with your uh, your, your contact with ODG. Uh, how'd you hear of ODG? If you don't have a contact, feel free to email our help desk, odghelp at mcg.com, or reach out to me uh, as, as Jeff had on before, the tom.farrell at mcg.com and give one of us a call um, or, or send us an email, and we'll be happy to, to explore that further. All right, thanks, Tom. Um, let's see, and I guess this is our last one. Is further training available for my staff? Yes, definitely. We are um, always happy to do more training, and we could do it on, in large numbers or on one-on-one -on -one basis. Anyone who needs any training, feel free to reach out to, to us. As, as Jeff has my information up there. If you don't have uh, a current account executive or contact, email me or, or the help desk, of course, odghelp at mcg.com. If you do have a current person you're in touch with, definitely send them an email, give them a call, say, I'd love to set up some more training for my company or for myself as an individual or whatever the case might be, and we're, we're always happy to set one up and, and do that. All right, great. Thanks, Tom. Um, and I also just, through the chat message, just um, sent out the link to our mcg.com slash ODG um, website. On that website is the client resources section, and then there are self-training tools. Um, and there are a lot of different short little videos of every part of ODG to go through. And um, so those are excellent as well. And then our, we got one more question in, will there be a link to watch this again? And yes, there will. Um, Everyone who attended or registered will receive an email within one week with the link to this recording. So um, you can watch it as many times as you want then. So thank you so much, Tom. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. And uh, don't be a stranger. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Please stand by.